Hey, welcome to Fun and Fix. Uh, my name's Ivan Berry. I'm Felix White. Uh, and it's, uh, it's lovely to be back here in the studio. How you been, mate? I've been really good, apart, apart from Saturday, mm. which I thought was going to be really good, first 20 minutes, yeah. when we were like Brazil. Not even 20 minutes, the first half. Do you see the stats at half time? Gone. It was, I think, 78% possession to Fulham to their 22 with our 11 or 12 shots to their one. And at those, that point, you're thinking, you're thinking two things, aren't you? You're thinking, right, we've either thrown away the chances, they're going to have the team talk of their lives come out and, you know, and, you know be a totally different squad, which yeah. is kind of what they are, or we're going to keep going that way and eventually we're going to break through. I mean, notoriously, defensively, they're brilliant. Yeah, yeah, right. They strangled us, yeah. If you're watching this or listening sometime in the future, we're referring to Newcastle winning 1-0 at the Cottage on Saturday, mm. which has been the back end of... Um, it's like a random results generator set of results over the last eight games. Like I've never known yeah. anything like it. We've done Spurs 3-0. Yeah. We beat United 2-1 for the first time in 20-odd years away from home. Yeah. and then Brighton, been, didn't we? We thrashed Brighton we in there in the mix Brighton. as well, yeah. And then we've been beaten at Forest... Yes. Were we 3-0 down at Forest? We were 3-0 down within the first half. Yeah. 40 minutes or so. Yeah, yeah. Um, just chaos. Sheffield United, the most fullish thing I've ever seen in my life. What a comeback life. though. And what a, what a way to get that kind of last minute equaliser. Well, I, I, I was going to say that we were, we were technically 4-1 down. Yeah. And then the VR gets overruled and we end up drawing that game 3 all. Yeah. Um, which is chaos. Yes. So it's very hard to judge what this season is, but what I would say positively that you were just saying is that first half against Newcastle, especially Willian, mm. it just it actually landed. I mean, we've obviously had him on untalked in depth with Willian here, but it landed what a special footballer he is to have at a cottage and the Definitely. way he drifts with the ball. And to, mm. like he, he really is in a place at the moment where those we're seeing those little touches and flicks that are just the hallmarks of absolute world class footballers. Yeah, so it's not that's nice to see, isn't it? A hundred percent, man. And and uh, yeah, like you said, Williams one of those players where you're like, you wished he was he was twenty six, twenty seven. But then if he was twenty six, twenty seven, he'd be playing for Barcelona or you know again one of the clubs he's played for in the past. Right. Yeah. No disrespect to us at Fulham, but you know we've got him in a, a beautiful moment. But I don't know whether he. No, you know, don't know what's going to happen next season, but yeah, he can certainly still play the game, play it beautifully. Very much. And do you know what the great thing about Fulham is, Ivan? Yeah, go on. Is this so, a segue? Yes, it okay, is a segue. Yeah, yes. <laughs> is that in our alumni yeah. of the history of Fulham Football Club, yeah. in recent history, yeah. we can track people like William who played with Brazil, Pereira, mm. a recent guest. Yeah. That's, actually, thank you for everyone to listen and watch that. That's been brilliant, the feedback to Pereira. That was yeah. a lovely episode. Um, but we can also talk to footballers from the lower leagues that we have just as much affinity for yeah, yeah. like Rob Scott mm. from uh, the 96 97 and a bit before a bit after uh, Mickey Adams team famous team yeah. he came down because he's working with Rotherham yeah and uh, they, we had a cup tie didn't we third round cup tie yeah one of the dullest cup ties uh, in the history <laughs> of uh, any football it was wasn't yeah, it yeah it was yeah. awful did I we nick yeah. that one nil or something oh something I just yeah I, mean, I can't yeah. even remember now I've decided to sort of let it just disappear from my head god that was so dull yeah. Yeah. anyway so um Rob Scott was in town for that, so we grabbed him. And this is a little bit more of a niche one, I think, probably for Fulham fans. But for me, it was a special one because this is the team I remember falling in love with Fulham Football Club mm. with. So those names in that team are forever etched in my heart and my head. And we run through that with Rob, like reeling out these names, like the cast of like Goodfellas or something. Yeah. Danny Cullip, Mickey Adams, Richard Jurgen Carpenter, Mickey Conroy, it could go on. Yeah. Um, so, and the lovely thing about this chat is that he has that closeness with Fulham, but it actually was a couple of moments where he's actually seemed like he was going to go. Yeah. Didn't he? Yeah. I don't know if I'm putting words no, into No, no, his... not at all, man. He got proper choked up. He was sort of, you know, there, there's moments where he's fighting back the tears. And wh can I just say what's really nice is you can tell this is your ear. This is where you fell in love with football. Right. And and the way you talk so passionately. I, I've got to be honest, this is just slightly before my time. I'm, yeah. I'm like a year or two after is when I started coming. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it was nice to almost just witness this genuinely beautiful interview between the two, you know, the two of you. I'm there, I chime in every now and then, but... You know, it, the, the passion there is, is is really nice and it's it's lovely to see. Well, we mentioned it in the chat because you told me beforehand that when Mickey Adams came to do Forever Fulham on the pitch at mm. half time, he got the biggest sort of ovation really of, it, of of any name actually. And there's been some really big ones. Yeah. So, um, and that's just a case in point that 
this is such an important Fulham side because mm. they are the personnel in this Fulham team are pre Alfire takeover and post it as well. Mm. So they are literally the tipping point in which you witness Fulham Football Club change, yeah. but they're the essence of it. Yeah. And there's lots of people my age and older that do miss that part of Fulham in some ways or feel very nostalgic about it. Yeah. So it's important that we keep connection with those guys because yeah. they understand Fulham Football Club in a way but players since it mm. might not, you know. Definitely. So it's a beautiful chat. Um, he played everywhere. Some great anecdotes. Should we throw to it? I think so. Definitely. Come on, Rob. All right. As we mentioned, it gives me, well, just firstly say it's so nostalgic, Rob Scott, looking at your face with the cottage <laughs> behind me. Because when I first started coming to Fulham, when the cottage looked different, significantly different to this, you were in all those teams. And my first memory I'll put to you, I don't know if I've like imagined this, if it's but, good, let's hope, yeah. Well, it's definitely good. <laughs> it's that you used to play behind the front too, but Jeff has told me that you played everywhere, like right back, right midfield. Yeah. Was, were you famous for your versatility? Well, I wouldn't say famous. I'd say, like, um, yeah, but more so sort of latterly when I went to Rotherham more so. But oh, right, okay. Here. Um, you played up front. and like Yeah, yeah like we right. played like a front three. So uh, Mickey Conroy... Darren Freeman, and, oh. and then I kind of played on the right. Just names. Yeah, so I played on the right of the front three with Paul Watson, played right back, although he was left-footed. Yes. So he used to step inside his left foot and just whiz it around the corner to me. Yeah. Um, and I'd either cross it or try and get a goal or whatever. So, yeah, it was very nostalgic going back to your point, walking down from up the road, looking at the cottage and... It was all that time ago. It sounds like five minutes ago to me. Because you left in, what was it, 98 maybe? So yeah. have you been back here since then? Yeah, I right. came back for the reunion a few years, a couple of years ago, I've which was brilliant. This. It's great. I was just saying to my chief exec that how to look after you when you come here. And I, I, it's weird for, for me, it was what is now League Two. But I think the fans have this kind of affinity with that squad because it was the start of mm. kind of where you are now. 100%. Which at the time right. you don't realise. Yeah, exactly. Um, and obviously what, preceded that was some pretty tough times yeah yeah um, you know and, and looking at the stadium now it is you know apart from apart from the cottage and over that side hasn't changed too much the rest of it is unrecognizable yeah yeah that's i'm really i'm happy that you brought that up because and i think one of the reasons as well as being very successful see 96 97 season which is down in folklore and fulham history but i think one of the reasons that you stayed in people's minds is that as you say you're the collection of those players marked Fulham before and Fulham after Al Fayed and you're mm. you're the only people that saw that transition actually happen. And just before we started recording you were saying that you used to have to park when you first turned up you parked on the road yeah. like for the games <laughs> type thing. Yeah. Well I, I used to come over from sort of um Sutton, like just outside of Sutton, Banstead, and drive in on a, on a Saturday before a game, come through Richmond Park you come in and there was no designated parking because there isn't around here anyway. But right. it was all, a lot of it was back then <coughs> parked where you could and, and not too close. Well, sorry, for the games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I used to get here early if you could get across Partney Bridge without any traffic. Yeah. Get here early enough, park up within five, ten minutes of walking. Right. And then walk to the ground and... Going I, rem I remember cottage. it was used to be parked wherever you wanted. Yeah, well, yeah. Play, well, yeah, man. Like we used to. This, me yeah. and my dad, my granddad, would all pull up as close as we could get because yeah. of granddad. Cause, yeah, you know, yeah. I'd expect that far. of you, not of the <laughs> team. <laughs> oh, uh, players, <laughs> like, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, we, I yeah. thought they might get was, looked after a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think that's that, true, yeah. that, that was part first of the, <laughs> Yeah, but that was part of it. Yeah, yeah. it was, there was no <laughs> airs and graces about us. And I was just saying there before, used to walk into the cottage. You, so you didn't have too... You, know, you did, walking from your car to the... You always hope you do well because otherwise you get abuse from the fans and always praise from the fans. Oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. you go and dump your bags in the cottage, come out, have a look at the pitch and then go back in. And then after the games, we used to get changed and then come over here. Obviously, the, the, this stand now where we're sat wasn't this. It's terracing, isn't it? It's it was ter exactly. open terracing with yeah. grass growing through it. Um, <laughs> and in all this area here <laughs> where, we're where we're sat above was gravel. For oh, some bizarre it? reason, it was like a gravel bank there. And I remember it distinctly because I can remember once having a chat with Mickey Adams there about why I wasn't playing. <laughs> Towards the end of that promotion scene, I'd been injured. And he said, oh, you should be happy. You've played 42 games or whatever it was. I'm like, yeah, but I want to play the last three, yeah, even yeah. though I've been injured. Anyway, it was gravel, like a gravel bank. And we used to go around the back of the riverside into the bar where all the fans were. Right. 
So you just go in after the guy. And that was the norm. It wasn't like, a pe- I think people look at you now and say, why are you mad? But yeah, yeah. yeah. it was brilliant. Oh, obviously, if you, you wouldn't go over if you'd had a bad game or you'd lost. But <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Families were in, in, in the Riverside. So you go and see your parents or your girlfriend or whoever was here to see you. And then you'd be in the bar and be there. Well, we used to be there till late on because we used to have a, it was brilliant here. I mean, the lads that we had here, it wasn't a drinking culture, but it wasn't a live like they live now culture. Right, sure. It was, you know, you'd have a social after the game and, you know, the young lads, we came from all over, but I was fairly local. So we'd either go Putney or down the King's Road, less so, but more into Wimbledon Village. Yeah. And that was it. Single lad life was brilliant for me. I loved, I, I, I like the nostalgia coming in <clears throat> was nothing but like, Oh, it's just brilliant. Oh, man, it's so nice to be connected to a football yeah, club like is, that. Yeah. And there's the interesting thing is, like, all Fulham players have that history yeah. of it, it seems, like that sort of affection for the club. Do you, do you, can you, like, identify what that is exactly about Fulham, you think? That's well, I think it's the... I, I, I don't know if it's the fact that it's from a fairly salubrious area in terms of what's round here. Yeah. You know? But the club was never that. Yeah, it's exactly. almost like you're a bit of a boil on the arse round here to start. <laughs> a boil on the arse. <laughs> it was, club, it right? was though. It's it so was because we need a new slogan. The club, <laughs> it's certainly not now. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the demographic of fans has definitely changed. Yeah, but you know, when I played here, a lot of the fans didn't live around it because they couldn't afford to live around here. Right. So they used to travel in, and it was almost that affinity they had with the fans that they came from outside, but this was their club. Yes, sort of thing. Yeah. So, and the players were you just bought into it because. When I came, they were down the bottom of the league, you know, and we had to stay up that year. And and it was, Mickey did a brilliant job. I was saying to mm. my chief exec on the way in that he did an excellent job of bringing players in that were kind of cut loose from bigger clubs. I mean, I'd come from Sheffield United, which at the time had been a Premier League club and was yeah. a decent sized club. You know, Darren Freeman had, had, had come from lower down, but been at Gillingham and kind of let go. Paul Watson was the same. Richard Carpenter, the same. Yeah, good. Had, yeah, you had all, you had all the, the senior lads like Simon Morgan had been let go by Birmingham. Mickey Conroy had been be- let go by um, bigger clubs. And Danny Cullip. Danny Cullip had come in. Um, Dan, I can't remember where Danny had come from. The goalkeeper. Was Stannard the goalkeeper? In yeah, the yeah, he was originally, but then Mark Walton came in. Yeah, Mark Walton, yeah. And uh, Waltz was brilliant. Like, great guy, great leader of a social yeah. Being a Welsh lad, always up the front of the bus singing. Uh, Glenn Cockrell then came in. Yeah, Martin Thomas. Um, I could name them all. It's like that's so interesting what you're saying, though. Sorry, I've just but the because um, I I'd, I'd never known that, but that really successful team was was built on collection of people that were sort of rebuilding their careers or had a point to prove and sort of well, found each other in that moment. Exactly that. Mickey played on it well. Mickey was fiery at mm. the best of times. Um, and he used to get into you. He used to know how to press buttons. And it was like, you lot are just a rabbit, <laughs> basically. And I've brought you in here and you're going to be better players. And this is what you are. Yeah. And we kind of went, yeah, yeah, we are. And there were there was a good group of young lads, like I said, Darren Freeman, myself, Martin Thomas, Paul Watson, Chippy, um, Jürgen, Jürgen as you called him, um, amongst others. And we kind of, Bonded, but the yeah. the older, more senior lads were were excellent. You know, yeah, like yeah. Morgs chipped in, and you know Nick Kuzak was Nick. You know, he was yeah, the he was Kuzak. the intelligent one of the of the group sitting in the front reading his Guardian newspaper on the bus. But that was just him, and no one really took <laughs> because we were a bit of a rabble. Yeah, yeah. You know? And um, oh, like, it was brilliant. I, I can't say anything other than for, great times here. For people that don't know, who might be a bit younger than um, myself and Ivan, that team went from being second bottom of the lowest tier um, to a couple of years later getting promoted. Yeah. Mm. And then obviously... the following year. The following year, the following yeah. season getting yeah. promoted. Uh, Rob McAree, the mytho- Real Mackey, mythological yeah, the goal. Yeah, yeah. And then um, put the ball in a car on there. And then after that, obviously, is for when our fire takes over. So yeah. what happens is what from your describing there in three years is is the entire history of Fulham Football Club really in a little micro. Yeah, 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 condensed yeah. into a short space of time. Because yeah, you know, obviously before I came in, there was a lot of struggles. There was obviously the well documented about the merger with QPR. Mm, and yeah, that that hung around for quite a while, and then Jimmy Hill being the chairman and yeah, the, the, you know, obviously this is prime real estate, and there was talks about selling the ground and relocating, and then I came in. Um, in the I can't remember when it was, but ni- early '96, and we were second bottom of the league. And yeah. um, Ian Bramford was in charge, and 
he'd brought his sort of Southampton contingent with him. So Glenn was here, Mickey Adams was here, and Mickey was a player coach at the time. <coughs> yeah. But Ian, within about three games, moved upstairs, which I don't think lasted that long. I can't really remember that side of it, but it didn't last too long. And Mickey took over with Corky, and I knew Corky from Sheffield United. So I think that's oh, how Alan the move. Cork. Yeah. So Alan Cork, that's how the move kind of came about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, it was just a really good time. It was like, yeah, we struggled to start with that first season was staying up. We stayed mm. up fairly okay in the end. And then the next, I can remember we played Gillingham here the last game of that season where we'd stayed up and Gillingham got promoted under Tony Pulis. Oh, wow. Wow. And they celebrated on the pitch. Yeah. Like yeah. proper celebrated. Yeah. And we were stood there going. And there's that rivalry. Yeah. So I can remember training the pre-season up at uh, Epsom Downs, running our balls off as usual with yeah. Mickey. And at the end of the running session, he said, right, everybody lay down on the grass. And, I went, and this is like sports science and at its best now. And he's like, right, I want you to lay down and close your eyes and think about what happened at our ground, Craven Cottage, the scenes that Gillingham, I guess I've got shivers now to be fair, thinking about it. What, gets you a bit emotional to be honest, yeah. um, what they did. Yeah. And I can distinctly remember that visualisation of them getting promoted and he went, that will be us at the end. And this is no <laughs> by the way. This, he said, that will be us yeah. because we're going to be stronger, fitter, more athletic than other teams in this league. We might not be better, but we will be all of those things. Yeah. And we were. And we were. And, uh, That's extraordinary. It, how much yeah. of how much and, uh, of it goes down to a talk like that? Do you think a lot? Because it lot. feels quite movie that, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's without and, that and, talk, and like you can sit here and go, oh yeah, you, you know, everything gets embellished as you move along. But I, honest to God, I remember we were training at the Fire Brigade London grounds, and we used to run from there to Epsom Downs to the race course. Yeah. We did a pre-season session, and after that we were doing sit-ups. I remember it, and he said, right, done. Um, Lay back, did it, and he said all that stuff. And at the time, you're probably <coughs> thinking, "Yeah, all right, you know." But you, we were young; a lot yeah, of us yeah. were young lads, and you kind of go, "Yeah, all right, then." I'll have <laughs> yeah, that. And you yeah, get, yeah. you kind of get whether you get bamboozled by <coughs> it, or whether you believe it, or whether your older pros thinking, "I've heard all this before." Yeah. But I hadn't really heard that before. That is so, so magical. Yeah, and that's you know great. what I like to think as well is that if if Mickey Adams hasn't taken this as you describe him, rabble. Of yeah. players and had that year maybe Fulham aren't in the well, shot window for Al fired and he thinks oh look yeah, Fulham's I, buzzing I agree do you know what I mean so mate it could all come down to that point I think that's yeah. why the fans kind of still see that group as that because exactly. they, they'll be sitting there thinking but we wouldn't be sitting there watching Premier League football totally and I think that's why that affinity is there with a certain age group of fans yeah is still there yeah yeah because it was pretty when I first came. Yeah, yeah. And it was for fans. I can remember it. I remember playing talk here in the pissing rain and the, this stand here was virtually empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, playing our local rivals at the time were Barnet. Yeah. Because Alan Mullery was there and obviously the, the Mullery, links yeah. there. And they were at the top of that league at the time and there was a bit of to and fro with Morgs and him in the press and those were the games that we were playing. Mm. You know, that was our local derby. Not playing Chelsea, not playing Brentford, not playing the top London teams in the Premier League. Yeah, so, yeah. I think that's where it sort of all stemmed from. But you mentioned Torquay, the famous game that, oh, Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, but um, the famous game we all talk about is going away to Torquay and losing that game to go second yeah. bottom. And everyone talking about that being the lowest moment in that was before modern history. Me. That was before yeah. you came in. Yeah. So that was Brantford brought you in after that yeah. game type thing. Yeah, I think that might have been the season. I right, okay. If, I don't know if that was the season before or that season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't remember being in that. Right, okay. In that squad at the yeah, time. Yeah. I came, back then there wasn't any windows, transfer windows. So it was like, I came, I think, I don't know exactly what month it was that I signed, but it was half, part way through a season, more than halfway through that season. Yeah. Um, and we were bottom two. Right. Um, I never even gave it a second thought. I thought, brilliant. Training at London Fire Brigade Grounds, which is 10 minutes from my mum and dad's house. <laughs> my ex-girlfriend was down the road. I thought, yeah. right, I'll get back into that. And brilliant. the mates were there. You know, schoolmates and mates from Sutton were all local. Yeah, sweet life. You know, I've been living away for a couple of years up north and it was brilliant. And I like, it's just a, ch it's, this was my first real football experience of playing first team football. I've been to Sheffield and I had not really played. I'd had a loan at Northampton, but this was my first football playing home. Yeah. So it was like, right, 
this is my first real memories of being a professional footballer in terms of games. What oh. do you remember of the atmosphere in, in 96, 97? Because it was all being terrorists. Yeah, it was good. Well, initially it wasn't so good because it was squeaky bum time, as the phrase is now wheeled out. But yeah, it was all terracing over there, um, you know, alongside the alongside the cottage. The the uh, yeah, it was all standing, wasn't it? It was no only the riverside was seats, the riverside seats, yeah. yeah. And uh, well, the first year was a bit nerve wracking. The second year that well, my first full year, but the second season I was here when we got promoted. Yeah. So it was bouncing a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Away games were brilliant. Yeah. Like, obviously the one that springs to mind is the Carlisle game and the amount of fans, I mean, for the, the distance for that, the amount of fans were there. But Cambridge away, last game of the season, was a, was a, was a good, was a, you know, they were all yeah. good atmospheres. You know, we, I can remember beating Scarborough here comfortably and I think scored a couple and it was just, I think the fans just sort of went, oh, right, this is what it's like to win games of football. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it was a time where they sort of started to embrace it. And what was your memories of Al Fayed coming in and taking over? Um, yeah, a little bit tinged with, okay, this is kind of the beginning of the end. Mm. Okay. Like, again, it was brilliant for the football club. Don't get me wrong, but we'd gone from sort of rag ass rovers to, you know, as I think Mickey well documented in his book, sort of said we were shopping at Wolves to then going and literally shopping at, Har- at Harrods. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> You know, yeah. I, I can remember when he first came in, it was, uh, we went up to London to get measured for suits and we're like, what? You know what I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like, what, Fulham suits? At, you know, at Christmas we got a hamper and so, yeah, it was like, you, you don't got to be an idiot to work it out. You sat in a dressing room and all of a sudden Chris Coleman's coming in and Peter Beards is coming in and... Yeah, Salarco came, was John, John Salarco came in and yeah. Yeah. a bit later on, Carlines Riedel is coming in and you're thinking... Yeah. <laughs> Probably not going to get much of a game here, but <laughs> yeah. it wasn't because you weren't good enough. They yeah. were just better than you. And it was that yeah. thing of that been them being names as well, wasn't yeah. it? And sort well, of there was a statement to be made. What he had was Harrods, was the name that he had there, and he wanted to make this similar. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So by buying big names in that played in the Premier League and played at the highest level was a statement to say, this club's going to be <coughs> fighting with the top end of the Premier League. Yeah. Um, I, I think I was probably one... Obviously, Simon Morgan stayed pretty much all the way through until yeah. he then left to go down to, to Brighton, I think. Uh, I was probably one of the longer staying ones, yeah. uh, the younger lads. Yeah. Because um, I went on loan to Carlisle, funny right. enough. Um, I did a, that was when you could do a month's loan. Yeah. And then I came back and played a few games. So I'd done quite well up there. And I came back and played, played up front with Peter Beardsley. And then I think. Great. How yeah, was that playing with Peter Beardsley? He's a great bloke. Yeah, honestly, yeah. one of the best pros you'd ever come across was there was no airs and graces, there's no ego with him. Yeah, um, to say he'd been one of the best players in England for a long time. I think he uh, scored some free kicks, didn't he? Did yeah, he he, Lincoln was one of the games I played with him. He hit underneath the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather yeah. than trying to hit I it over, that. they all jumped <laughs> underneath <laughs> the wall. Skinned it, yeah. Um, that was my first game back after being on loan, and then. You kind of I played a few games here, but then you kind of saw how it was going. Yeah, yeah. So. Memories are it was just evolution. Yeah. That was initially that was um Al Fide put Wilkins in charge. Yeah, with Ray Keegan came in. as like sort of Direct as assistant. Football, yeah. well, firstly, you and Ray, how do you get on? Yeah, with Ray, well, you could not help but get on with Ray, he's a great guy. Yeah. Lovely bloke. Um Lincoln actually came in for me at one point and I didn't really want to go. And he said, you know, pulled me to one side, said, Look, you don't have to go. You know, it's they've come in for you, it's whether you want to go. And he said, Look, you know, stay here as long as you want. See what happens, but you know, for your career, think about it. Yeah. So he was brilliant, you know, and he <coughs> he was just a nice guy, and everyone yeah. says it, and it's true. Yeah, yeah. You know, it is true. He was a really, really nice bloke. Yeah, he sadly missed, and yeah. then and then Keegan after it. Yeah. How yeah, what was he, the relationship like? Yeah, with Keegan? all right. Yeah, he, look, he was. I think Kevin's upbringing was like not dissimilar to a lot of the younger lads that have been here. It was hard and he had to prove himself. And then he obviously went on to be one of the best players to play for England. So, <laughs> but he was, he was a brilliant motivator. Mm. Right. Like not the best coach in the world, but he was a, just a good motivator. He'd, he'd just sit next year before a game and say that he thought he was the best player in, the, you know, in this league. And you go out thinking, oh, it's Kevin Keegan telling me that. It's got to be a trend. <laughs> totally. So he was brilliant at that. Um, you know, Kevin was, you know, just his name. 
yeah. those before him, didn't it? Really, yeah. yeah. Again, uh, a bit of a statement, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. When that's he came in, and part yeah. of that is saying, oh, when, when, you, when I tell people now, oh, did you used to play off Fulham? Did you play for Kevin King? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, exactly. I play for Kevin Keegan. It's like it's so it's so strange talking to you because I'm really getting that reminiscent feeling of it being unbelievably positive optimistic time but also there was a sadness there yeah. at Fulham about one thing ending another thing starting yeah. and I remember feeling that sort of mixture in on the terraces of like older people being a bit sad like feeling that a version of their Fulham had left yeah. and it just been so positive it was, it's such a strange time isn't it yeah in, it was and I history. still get that now yeah yeah um it was it was almost like the, the good times got cut short pretty quickly yeah 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 because it had gone from a Fulham of hard times and financial issues to then getting a team that started to win and yeah. fans going getting promotion oh, wow. yeah so then yeah. go in well we're going to spend all this money it was like oh, hang on a minute we've done it could we not just see what we would have got to if we hadn't had that yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. more years yeah. Yeah. because but, it's interesting because yeah. ivan had uh, mickey adams on the pitch yeah. not so long ago and he got uh, as big a reception as any of the big names yeah, yeah. like he's Honestly. remembered like as it's a beautiful for, yeah for it amazing, is. Isn't yeah. It? And, and i wasn't Saying that when he get a bit of money, I did because he did as well. I think he, he yeah. cho got choked up on the yeah, pitch. I do. Yeah. I genuinely do. And when Jeff texts me, I was like, oh, I can't believe they still want to speak to me. You like, know, of it's course. Like, it's, but I got. I have this affinity walking to the ground. Yeah. It was like taking me back to 1996, where, and I said this to my to, to my one of the directors that I walked in with. It's like you don't realise at the time mm. how good it is. Yeah. You think you're going to play forever. You think you're going to yeah. be young forever. You're going to yeah. think you'll be footloose and fancy free forever and in just enjoy life. Yeah. Um, and it was, what, you know, more than half my life ago. Yeah. You know, it's, but I still come here now and I, kind of can't help but smile walking into the place when when you look out there do you see any specific moments yeah can you flash back oh, in yeah, your head yeah. or anything yeah I, I said Torquay but I can remember playing Torquay here and um it was the season we got promoted and as I said I played wide on the right and I remember it because obviously it's a it's a it's something that was good for me but two things that was Torquay game here and I I remember it being a Van Basten esque goal. You remember the one he scored for Holland in against Oh when it comes over his shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't quite as good as that. <laughs> That's how I remember it. <laughs> but it wasn't as good as that. Yeah. It was Watto who played it from left right back with his left foot, bent it round to sort of the angle of the I remember it being on the angle of the of the uh, eighteen yard box. It wasn't, it was more probably six, seven yards inside, but I hit it first time into the far corner. Oh wow, nice. nice. Kasami. And I remember yeah. it being Van, it wasn't quite as good as that, but you could tell. Well, that was, was, it. was it recorded? Is there any? Yeah, I think it's out there somewhere. Is it? Oh, is very it? I was about to say because <laughs> no one's seen it. You can yeah, tell. it's a picture of it in Morgs's book. Oh, is there? Yeah. Is there? Great. Yeah. And we played Scarborough here, and I scored a couple. And not, I think I scored a couple, but I can just remember everything I did that game was just to the max, and yeah, like yeah. I played really, really well. Um, and I can actually remember Corky say, I think it was my first goals for the club actually, because Corky pulled me off the game and went, my wife had a dream about you last night. I went, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and he said, no, sh that you'd scored. And I did. Oh, oh no nice. way. So that sticks in, in the that in the brain. That is so beautiful. But like, yeah, it's just like, you do get nostalgic about it. Of course you do. How can you not? This ground does that to you anyway. Mate, I feel nostalgic seeing you. I'm, the one thing I want to know for some reason is, because I can't look at you without picturing the GMB shirts. Yeah. Mm. Did you keep I've any of those loads. shirts? Yeah, have I've got... Was he number eight? With number eight? Uh, we, well, it varied back yeah, then because you, you didn't have squad numbers. Yeah, so yeah. it was either 11, seven, right, okay. eight, any other, anything from seven up. Was yeah. it just opening a bag? Everyone yeah, it was of, more you know. positionally, to be fair. Oh, right, okay. Then. okay. Um, but because we didn't play in, uh, the standard 4-4-2, the front three, like, Mickey was always, Mickey, uh, Mick Conroy was always a nine. Darren Freeman was either 10 or 11, and I was seven. Right. Or a nine, which was a bit weird playing wide. But listen, a lot of players these days put a lot of credibility on what number they are. Back then, there's... Whatever one to eleven, given. I was happy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mate. Before you go, because your, your team, Rotherham, are about to play Fulham in about mm. an hour's time in the third round of the FA Cup, which people will know the score of after this. So hopefully, yeah. it's positive one for Fulham. <laughs> but um, before I let you go, just a quick one on because I th think people have such fondness for that team. What was it like in terms of like the jollies and nights out? I'm thinking like coming back <laughs> from Carlisle. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Are there any moments and like, uh, yeah, there could was, be. was it constant? You could probably do a two or three hour podcast on some of the uh, oh, really? frivolities that we got up to. But <laughs> it was brilliant. You know, the Carlisle one you talk about. We'd, well, 
we, I think we guaranteed promotion on that game and it's a long old trip but the first thing we used to do is stop off create a beer mm. Mark Walton was the uh, instigator of the singing karaoke at the front of the bus Glenn Glenn Cockerell always used to obviously used to think he was uh, Rod Stewart Rod Stewart anyway <laughs> so. and he still looks like Rod Stewart <laughs> yeah, he? yeah he still does but um, he used to get up and have a few songs and good bit of banter it was brilliant you know and then being at home here that you know we used to just have a good time it wasn't a drinking culture that was a drinking it was it was a results culture that bred social side yeah, of it, yeah, if that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, so, yeah, totally. You know, the good times came from winning games and it was the group more than the person. Any one person in that squad can't stand out to me. It was yeah. the group. And, and and Mickey, to be fair, cultivated that. Um, but yeah, there were some brilliant times. I can remember some excellent nights out and even coached. I can remember some bad ones, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but um, if you laughed at the back of the coach when you'd lost and Mickey would turn around and give you the dead eye... Um, oh, you're in trouble then. you're in trouble yeah but it was uh, yeah, more good times than bad and back here as well for the derby game not long ago um, how was that camera oh what they, what they what were you yeah, the yeah the reunion that, that, that team well, it's like you, know, you hear it all the time but you know it's kind of like you've never been away and yeah. you don't tend to keep in contact with players that you play with because you're all in different parts of the country and families and whatever you know, your life just changes but um, yeah meeting them were brilliant again and it was almost like banter just kicked in straight away. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, I love that, it. man. Yeah. Well, it will always go down as one of the greatest moments in Fulham's history. I'm, and I mean that sincerely, the team you're involved in. So, right, it's so really beautiful nice to, to have you here, man. And uh, that two, three hour special will have to come at yeah, some other definitely. point. I'd, yeah, I'd love yeah, to yeah. do it. I'd love to do it because, uh, you know, just coming back here, bring the memories come flooding back. So, mate, on behalf of all the Fulham fans that will be here tonight and all across the season, thank you for all the good times, man. Oh, appreciate it's nice it. to know. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Cheers, man. Rob Scott, do you know what that's made me think? Um, I would love to get more of that 96, 97 team in. Yeah. If we can just lit them amongst the modern greats and yeah. bigger names of football, I think that would be something really telling about Fulham Football Club in there. Definitely. And the way he talks about all those players with such affection and stuff like that, it, it mirrors people of my age and above that witnessed that team, I think. So it's yeah. a really lovely thing. Um, Danny Cullip. Can we get Danny Cullip? Jeff, can you give Danny Cullip a call? All right. Give, consider him, a it, give him a little buzz. Consider it booked. But not next week. Next week is oh man, it's our sorry. All, two in two weeks. In two weeks' time, F four. Yeah, it's our all time uh, top scorer. Like the the guy that Mitrovic was chasing, but failed miserably, and thought I'm never going to catch this guy. So he decided to jump ship and move to Saudi. That's the reason. That's the real reason. It's he the just man, knew he could never catch him. It's the man Mitrovic couldn't chase. Gordon Davies. Next up on Fulham Fix. <laughs>